What is this uh, this cage here that's hanging? That's the man bucket. Man bucket. That's the man bucket. That's how you get in and out of the shaft. It might sound crazy to jump out of a plane 7,000 feet above the earth. But what might be crazier is going 7,000 feet below the surface of the earth. There are deeper mines in North America than the Resolution Mine, but none with a single vertical tunnel this long. A 6,943-foot concrete barrel, 30 feet in diameter, bored into the mountains of Arizona. How fast are we going? We're going 500 feet a minute right now. That's our maximum speed. Are we below sea level? Yeah, we are now. It takes 20 minutes to travel to the bottom of the mine, and it's hot down here. We're 1.3 miles closer to the center of the earth, closer to molten lava. Feel the water. Oh yeah, that's a hot shower. Very hot. The rock temperature is 180 degrees, and the water is also. Without cooling, an average person is only going to last a couple hours down there, so we had to do a lot of engineering and construction to uh, make an environment suitable for people to work in. The mine's owner, Rio Tinto, began drilling the shaft in 2008. It took six years and a crew of 100 people working around the clock to finish. And the deeper they went, the more it cost. It's only worth it for Rio Tinto because trapped behind these walls is the fourth largest untouched copper deposit in the world. This deposit was covered by rocks after it was formed, so basically no surface expression. So you walk across, you know, right above the deposit at the, at the surface, you have no idea it's there. So what is this? This is what, what is this a representation of? This is a crude approximation of the resolution deposit. These pencils in here represent some of the drill holes that we have through the deposit, pulling out the rocks that they are from these drill holes. Over the last 10 years or so, the company has drilled more than 100 test holes into the deposit. A circular drill pulls up long cylinders of rock called core samples so geologists can see what's underground. This is core that we've drilled from the surface, a number of holes, of, you know, anywhere from 6,000 to 7,000 feet, to then analyze to determine how much copper exactly is in the ore body. What we've got here, this mineral right here, this sort of brassy yellow color, that's calcopyrite. So that's our main ore mineral. That, uh, and that contains copper. Yeah, so calcopyrite is about 35% by weight copper. The core samples show a deposit so dense that this mine could one day supply enough copper to meet a quarter of total U.S. demand. But deposits this big are usually a lot closer to the surface, where you can strip mine the minerals. This deposit is far too deep, so they're trying something that's never been done before this far below ground. They're tunneling under the deposit in order to mine it from the bottom up. This is what makes the Resolution Mine so unique. The method is called block caving. So a block cave mine is you basically drive a series of tunnels underneath and make some opening so the ground begins to uh, cave in. V-shaped holes are blasted into the rock to create funnels. Gravity pulls the copper-laden rock down to the bottom of the funnel, and it breaks up and crushes itself into loads that can be scooped up. Every time a load is hauled out from the bottom of the funnel, more copper falls down. So once yeah, the, uh, right. the block caving starts to happen, that action will be over there? Yes. And it's about like, you're right, it's that about way. About right, just right out here. That's right, these guys haven't even started mining yet. Rio Tinto will have spent more than six billion dollars before the first ounce of copper is ever sent up the shaft and it could be 2020 before they even get the federal mining permits they need. But they're in so deep, literally, the only logical thing to do is to keep going and hope the dig pays off.